Jojo Diaz and Shavkat Rakimov draw um, on the, also on the zone later in the day. But uh, the fight just before that was Brian Castaño winning a unanimous decision decision over Patrick Teixeira from Brazil. And I really like Castaño, man. I really like the way he fights. I saw his fight against Arislandi Lara, and that fight was, was scored a draw. thought it was a close fight. Wasn't mad with that decision. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the only time I've seen him. And what was really impressive about this fight to me was that Teixeira was actually doing a pretty good job of keeping long and keeping mobile. And kind of throwing long straight punches. I mean, some of it was wide, but he was throwing it from from a range that Castaño couldn't answer. But the thing about Castaño is he would work his way inside with his feet, you know, with quick little burst of movements. And have these little flurry combinations. And he would just sort of blah, 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 blah. And then he would pop back out and he'd be moving his head. He'd be catching shit on his gloves. And then the minute there was an opening, he would pop in again, let three, four go, pop back out. And it was just like it's a it's an unpredictable come forward style where he's also very hard to hit. Like he he did a great job of blocking and parrying shots, moving his head, moving his upper body. And even, you know, Teixeira was landing really hard body shots the whole fight. And it just never slowed him down at all. He just kept having those flurries and anytime he could pin Teixeira on the ropes. You know, he would let go of a hard flurry. And he it's it, what's cool about him is he knows how to take advantage of those spots and he doesn't really waste any of them. Like he knows in that fight specifically, I'm shorter, I got shorter arms, this guy's jabbing and moving a little bit. You know, if I get an opportunity to get a couple off, I got to jump on that opportunity. And I think he did that. And to be honest with you, I think he's, I mean, he's a tough fight for anybody. At 154, in my opinion. I mean, they were talking about him fighting Jamel Charlo. I like that fight. If he's got a belt, and that's a unification fight that can be made easily, why not? Like, you know, there's there, it's unification fights are hard enough as it is. So if there's two guys that are interested in it, it's just like, come on. We got to do this now. Um, so I think great win for Castaño. Teixeira is a very tough, long, hard puncher. And uh, to be honest with you, even when they would fight inside and Teixeira was landing some some shots, for the most part, I mean, Castaño made it look kind of easy. It was like, it was weird because it was one of the most brutal one-sided fights I've seen in a while. Like, each round was relatively competitive, but ultimately Castaño was just kind of a different level. So, hopefully we get to see Castaño and Jamel Charlo next. We'll see. Um... The main event was Jojo Diaz and Shafkat Rakimov. Jojo Diaz uh, relinquished his belt because he missed weight by about three and a half pounds. And so ultimately, it was only on the line for Rakimov because he was so overweight. I think he was like 133 and a half for a 130-pound fight. And... You know, he was so overweight that the commission wouldn't even let him, you know, try to cut that weight to make weight. So he was immediately stripped of his belt. I don't know the whole story. I'm not going to pretend like I know the whole story. But it's very obvious to me that he had allowed his weight to get up to where getting to 130 was no longer realistic in the time frame. Because three and a half pounds in boxing, that's like a lot of weight. You know what I mean? Like that's... It wasn't like he was a pound off, half a pound off. If you're three and a half pounds, I mean, he was a lightweight. He was a lightweight. So it's like, there's something going. We don't know the whole story about why that happened, how that happened. But I think just looking at how I've seen him fight before and how sharp he normally is and the condition that he's usually in, like I I thought overall, this was kind of a disappointing performance for Jojo Diaz. And to be honest with you, I thought he won the fight. I didn't. I mean, I'm not mad about the draw, but I kind of felt like he won. I felt like he won seven or eight rounds, particularly down the stretch. He definitely won the last four or five rounds. So, but regardless of the decision, I don't think like he looked like he was in great shape. Which I'm norm. I'm not usually one to use the eye test, 
about someone's conditioning. It's like if you're performing well and you don't look the best, I'm going to take your performance as the criteria. You know what I mean? But in this one, I just didn't feel like I saw the same sharpness that I'm used to seeing with Jojo Diaz. Because I really, I really like watching this guy fight, and he usually is a very crisp, accurate puncher. And I think Rockimov showed him just enough variation. And I think his he was like, I'm not going to say he was huffing and puffing, but I mean, I don't think he was twinkle toes either. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think he was having a hard time getting through the rounds. I saw him clock check a couple of times. So it, to me, it was just like similar to the Warrington situation. It's like, what is the cause of that? Obviously, Rockimov is a tough opponent. So that's that's a part of it, right? The opponent is a good opponent. So if he's not at his absolute best, it's a rough night. I think Rockamoff is a real opponent. Obviously, though, conditioning was a factor. It has to be. You can't be that far off the weight, and it's not a factor. So, I mean, it was a great fight also, and I think he showed a lot of a lot of um, championship level grit to dominate the last four or five rounds of the fight in spite of the fact that a lot of those rounds were a little slow. A lot of times he wasn't getting his punches off. A lot of times Rockamoff was getting off combinations and getting out before there was an answer. So there was enough. There was Through those first eight rounds, it was either even or Rockamoff slightly ahead. You know what I mean? And... He did, Diaz did show that grit to take over the last stretch of the fight and just kind of outwill rock him off and out physical him. But the first, there was just whole stretches of the fight. I mean, after like this, like the third to the eighth round, I really did not think Diaz looked good. I thought he looked kind of tired. I thought he looked like he was dragging his feet. I thought he looked like he couldn't react the way he wanted to, that he was thinking and that his mind was moving faster than his body. So. I don't know. This is a, I, it's very similar to the Josh Warrington situation. Obviously, he didn't lose, and so that salvages, you know, I'm saying his career. But I think the pandemic is affecting fighters at the particularly at the top level when you're like used to a certain kind of training and access to certain stuff and um, access to certain equipment. It does seem like having these long layoffs is affecting top level fighters. I think even more than I would have expected. I think everyone thinks that, oh, this is great. I got some time off. I can stay in shape. I'm going to heal up, whatever. And that's true for some guys. But for some guys, it's not. For some guys, it's not good to have this much time out of the ring. You, If you lose your discipline, you can't get the kind of sparring you need to get to stay as sharp as you need to be. Um it's just a really difficult time to train. And so I think we're just seeing some of that when some of these guys are returning from 12, 14, 16 month layoffs. But at the end of the day, that isn't entirely an excuse because I think for who Rockamoff is, he was very sharp. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, Diaz's class did play down the stretch. He was able to out hustle him. I'm not mad about the draw. And I wouldn't have a problem with them running it back either. That's another fight where it's like, it look it, it seems like um, at least the narrative of the fight is going to be that Rakimov is better than expected and Diaz wasn't that sharp. So I don't see why you shouldn't do a rematch. Um, probably be easy to make. It was a tough physical fight. Do it in five, six months. You know, but maybe Diaz wants something bigger. But at the end of the day, you got to smoke this guy to get that something bigger. So... That's what it is for Jojo Diaz. I really like him, but he's got, um, I think he's got some questions to answer after that one. <laughs>